everyone, Misco Electric here for our first video of 2026. I'm thrilled to bring you yet another annual rewind. Electrification in the US was a heck of a ride over the last year. Despite the sunsetting of the carbon credit market and federal EV consumer subsidies and related demand volatility, electric vehicles continue to charge forward. So I have chosen the top three advancements in electric transportation, which defined 2025 from our perspective. The battery business made strides in North America as many factories were under construction or started production, representing tens of billions of dollars in investment. Advanced battery prices in the U.S. dropped to a record low, dipping by about 8% this year, following a steady annual price decline for more than a decade, excluding a blip in 2022. Competition, volume, and increased utilization in lithium iron phosphate, or LFP chemistries, continued to introduce efficiencies in 2025 as global EV cell prices arrived at $108 per kilowatt hour, according to Bloomberg NEF. Bloomberg has projected a further price reduction to $105 per kilowatt hour by the end of 2026. Experts say $100 per kilowatt hour is the tipping point at which batteries reach price parity with internal combustion engine vehicles. The average LFP battery pack prices across all segments came in at $81 per kilowatt hour, while higher energy density nickel manganese cobalt or NMC packs were at $128 per kilowatt hour. Not only are prices dropping for newly produced batteries, but battery recycling firm Redwood Materials confirmed that they have hit their stride and now expect to recover over 20 gigawatt hours of lithium ion battery material each year from production scrap, decommissioned battery packs, and consumer devices. They are now producing more than 60 60,000 tons of critical materials annually, establishing the viability of domestic circular battery production. Prices are dropping, volumes are increasing, and battery safety continues to improve. Completely inflammable battery packs have officially entered production. In fact, a national law was passed in China, which is the world's largest automotive market, mandating all EV packs are inflammable starting in July of 2026. We now have a preview of a future in which EV safety leaves internal combustion alternatives even further behind. A variety of new battery chemistries entering the market have been proving helpful too. Robust, low-cost sodium ion batteries have entered the mass market for EVs and stationary storage and will be implemented into many more EVs in 2026, proving that raw materials like lithium and cobalt are not required for an all-electric future. Semi-solid state batteries also left their mark as they underpinned Chinese production EVs by MG with their affordable MG four, offering efficiency of about 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Fully solid state batteries made headlines in 2025 too, with prototype EVs achieving over 700 miles of range over hundreds of thousands of real world miles. This year, major players including Samsung, CATL, BYD, Toyota, Volkswagen, Hyundai, BMW, and Mercedes each confirmed the start of mass production aimed for 2027. There is no doubt better and more batteries were a highlight in 2025. The old idea that electric cars are too expensive was shattered in 2025 by the global success of sub $10,000 EVs like the Geely EX2, BYD Seagull and Dolphin, and Wuling Mini EV, which collectively sold well over 1 million units. Americans can see those models next door in Mexico and Caribbean nations for now. In Europe, several EVs came to market at prices under $25,000, with Chinese vehicles capturing more than 10% market share. Here in America, where the average new automobile price is nearly $50,000, Chinese EVs are typically prohibited from competing, but we did make progress towards affordability as well. At the $40,000 price point, there are many competitors, which shows that we're moving in the right direction. At the end of 2025, 
we got a 300 mile EV priced under $30,000 in the form of the new Nissan Leaf. It will get its first competition in early 2026 when Chevy's new Bolt becomes available. But we think the most meaningful affordability story in 2025 for US buyers is the used EV market. Generally, the used car market was down this year. EVs stood out, selling in an average of 34 days, which was the fastest of any powertrain according to Edmunds. As a matter of fact, eight of the 20 fastest selling three-year-old vehicles were EVs, and nearly two-thirds of three-year-old EVs fell in the twenty dollars to $30,000 range. According to Cox Automotive, 43 used EV models typically sold for $30,000 or less. That includes the Tesla Model 3 at $23,583 on average, the highest volume used EV on the market. The excellent affordability is due to a number of factors, including the fact that most EVs on the road were purchased with $7,500 to $15,000 of state, federal, and utility subsidies, as well as generous manufacturer credits. The big drop from MSRP is not indicative of a loss in value, Value compared to the real-world cost of the vehicle to the owners. The current undervaluation of used EVs is also a classic market inefficiency resulting from an obsolete application of internal combustion engine depreciation math to EVs. Mounting repair costs and 150,000 mile average lifespans of combustion powertrains do not apply to fundamentally more durable and simplified EV technology. Today, the uninformed secondary market prices a 70,000 mile EV as aged, though landmark 2025 longevity studies now prove these drivetrains are tracking toward 300,000 mile life cycles with battery degradation averaging a mere 1.8% per year. Battery longevity is also shining. Battery research firm Recurrent published a study this year which found that for modern EVs from 2022 and onwards, the replacement rate for a new battery is just 0.3%. Additionally, the ignorance discount overlooks the eight-year, 100,000-mile federal warranty floor, which protects secondhand buyers from the most expensive components of electric vehicles. Nearly all EVs also have a degradation warranty of at least 70% of the battery's capacity during that same period. Budget buyers get a low-maintenance, high-utility asset at a price which fails to account for its massive remaining lifespan and lower cost of operation. That is a big win based on a misunderstanding which is not likely to persist. We'll remember 2025 as the year EV prices offered the rare gift of equity arbitrage afforded by a market which didn't catch up with the data. For number one, let me play a clip from last year's Electrify Expo Industry Day when the media was sensationalizing a message that EV charging infrastructure was doomed. How do you think this supercharger deal with Tesla would change EV driving in the U.S.? You know, if you look at how Elon Musk operates, this isn't the first time where he's done a big round of cuts and then he brings back about 10%. So this is a very common thing. I think it's something like 5 million people was a recent statistic uh, from Tesla. It's probably more than that applied to work at Tesla. So I'm not worried about their workforce because it's a very desirable place to work. And I know those people will get the job done. They're very mission oriented. So what are you going to be looking for as the year progresses in terms of this deal, like how it unfolds? Um, what do you expect? Is there anything you're concerned about? I think that it's a very good thing that people are now getting access to the Tesla supercharger network and most OEMs have agreed to come on. And I think ultimately it's going to be very impactful once we move towards having more of the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure program implemented. In 2025, EV charging infrastructure in the U.S. boomed like never before. Today, there are now over 65,000 public fast charging connectors online in the U.S. Tesla's supercharger network grew nearly 20% by the third quarter of the year. Several thousand new charging locations were activated with tens of thousands of connectors. The IANA network added about 75 locations, and many more were activated on the Mercedes high power charging and GM energy networks. Widespread partnerships adding hundreds more stations at locations with amenities including Walmart, Loves, 
Pilot, Sheets, Bucky's, Starbucks, Waffle House, and Shake Shack were also launched. But we think the industry's adoption of the North American charging standard probably delivered the most dramatic overall capability improvement for EV buyers in 2025. While more than 50% of all EVs on American roads today are Teslas, which have always been compatible with the Tesla supercharger network, most third-party EVs also gained access to the vast network in 2025, with Stellantis as the only major automaker waiting for access after they're announcing their commitment to switch from CCS in November. New NAX access more than doubled the number of reliable high-speed charging options for long-distance travel, with tens of thousands of additional fast charging connectors now available. In 2025, Justified range anxiety for owners of EVs with more than 250 miles of real-world range became a thing of the past. Well, 2025 proved EVs are here to stay with more accessible options, model variety, and better charging support than ever. What was your favorite EV moment this year, and what are you looking forward to most for 2026? Drop it in the comments, like and subscribe for more content, and have a happy new year. Until next time, Drive, fly, ride, go electric.